Up next in the stack, the student shows us his experiences from across the Atlantic. We see a pretty wacky talk show, and it's that time of the year, folks. We have some horror shorts to show you. All that and more coming up on the stack. Welcome to Short Stack. I'm your host, William Theodore O'Dell, and Short Stack is our insider view into the thoughts, passions, and interests that define the lives of our contributors. First up, we have a look into what one student experienced in his trip overseas. Let's have a look. So here it begins, an 8 hour flight across time zones to Brussels, Belgium. We left at 7pm and arrived at 8am, losing some pretty well needed sleep, but the view of us flying across the sunset was actually pretty cool. We arrived around 7.30am in Brussels, and we're kinda walking around aimlessly until we found a taxi. We then met up with my cousin and walked into the city square. After some sightseeing, we called in an early night, as we were still kinda jet lagged. The next day we headed down to Brussels Central and took a train to Bruges, a city in Belgium. There we met up with an old acquaintance of my parents. We took a river tour of the city, passing many of the major landmarks. Every now and then, uh, when we pass here, we can smell the brewery. It's a really nice city, and kind of reminded me of a model village with its architecture. We then headed back to Brussels, where we saw some pretty interesting street musicians. We got a late start the next day, and headed out to the Atomium, a giant structure made to look like an atom built in 1958 for the World's Fair. There were a bunch of great views, and an elevator with some trippy neon lights. We then went to this outdoor market where we ended our day. After three days in Brussels, we departed on a train to Paris. We arrived around 4 o'clock p.m., but we still got to do some sightseeing. We saw the Arc de Triomphe and went to the top, getting a nice view of the city and another well-known Parisian landmark. We then went to that Parisian landmark, the Eiffel Tower. At night it becomes illuminated and actually sparkles at the top of each hour. Going up at night was really cool, and we got to see a great view of the city. We started off our day by taking a train to Louvre. 
Obviously, we saw the Mona Lisa, but we also checked out some other paintings and sculptures that the museum had to offer. We then went to Montmartre, which had another great view of the city. After relaxing at our Airbnb for a while and getting some French McDonald's, we caught a late movie at the Le Grand Rex, the largest cinema in Europe. Our first stop for the day was at a cat cafe, which is exactly as it sounds. There are literal cats roaming around the cafe. We then went to Notre Dame, one of the most well-known churches in France. After that, we roamed around looking for a river cruise, finally finding one and taking a cruise downstream. We ended up at this extravagant shopping mall, which had a view of the Opera House and another well-known Parisian landmark. Our train back to Brussels wasn't until later, so we went to go see one last thing, Napoleon's tomb. Surrounding it, there was a big military museum which we explored before catching our train back. When we were back in Brussels, we hung around the town square, ate some pretty bad Mexican food, and called it a night. Our flight back to the States left early, so we were all in a taxi to the airport by 7 a.m. It was an eight-hour flight back, concluding our journey in Europe. What a beautiful country. <laughs> While some students consider going overseas to be an adventure, others believe staying local in your motocross tracks to be just as fun. Let's check in with Tommy Ciratella and his business, DS Edits. Hi, my name is Tommy Saratella, and I run my own photography and videography business, known as TS Edits. So TS Edits was formed about a year ago, and it primarily focuses on photographing local motocross enthusiasts and dirt bike riders. When I was three years old, I got the training wheels off of my regular bike, and I loved being on two wheels. It was so much fun. When I was almost four, that's when I got my first dirt bike, and that's when it really took off. I got my first camera at the end of December 2017, and I actually got to use it first when I had to bring the video camera for video production for school to the local dirt bike track. I got all the clips that I needed to get, all the video that I needed to get for the video project, and I ended up breaking out my camera because I brought it just in case I wanted to try out speed because I've never really done anything that involved fast moving objects. As soon as I broke out the camera, I was honestly hooked from that point on. I already had a YouTube channel going, and I started up an Instagram account, which then I started to post all the pictures that I got from that first day on there. And what I ended up doing was finding each rider by looking up their last name on their riding jersey and then their number. And I eventually found them, tagged them, and that's how people started to find me. It's really cool what you could do with time with a camera. You could either freeze it, keep everything in that frame completely still, 
or you could speed it up so that so much stuff is blurring, but then whatever you want in focus is in focus. The one thing that I think that really keeps me going is the amount of support from all my followers as every single time that I'm at the track, they either say hi or they message me and say like, hey, where are you? Like, can you get pictures of me? And I'm like, sure. And it's, it's really fun because there, there's always something to do and it, I, I just love doing it. It's interesting to see how one person's passion can turn into a productive one. Next up, we have a pretty e eccentric talk show. Um, I'm sure it will entertain you. <laughs> Let's take a look. Yo, when do we start this thing? We're in it right now. We're in it right now? Uh, um, how about those, that internet, am I right? Um, why aren't they laughing? Make them laugh. <laughs> oh, there you go, okay. Um, what do you call a cow that doesn't move? Ground beef. Please, help me, please, 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 please. Just bring the next guest in. Is that a fish? <laughs> Wait a second. It's not even a, it's not even a fish. There's just a mouse with a fish tail sewn onto it. Who books these people? Well, since you're here anyway, might as well do the interview, I guess. So Mr. Fish, do you think that technology is ruining our attention spans because we consume so much data and information to the point where we never thoroughly enjoy things and practice immediate gratification, ultimately pressuring artists to make their work more slapdash and prevalent just for validation? I was thinking the same thing. I like the way you think, Mr. Fishman. So, while we're at it, what do you think about gun control? Hmm. Wow. Wow, you were so right. You know, it's so, it's so obviously simple, yet sagacious and reasonable. You know, I may have misjudged you when you first walked over here, but uh, you're a pretty wise fish. I like you. <laughs> oh, you're too right about that, my friend. You are too right about that. Oh, thank you so much for being on the show. The fish, everybody, the fish. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Thanks for being here today. Oh, I was so excited about our next guest. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazingly talented, Eddie McCarthy, yeah! Yeah. Wow, you are <coughs> so handsome. You're not so bad yourself. <laughs> Really? You think so? Yeah. Really. <laughs> well, I got I got a couple questions to ask you if you wouldn't mind, of course. Ask away. Alright, cool. 
So, you're an artist, musician, poet, comedian, philosopher, writer, baker, candlestick maker, and the valedictorian of your class. Eddie, is there anything you can't do? Well, I can't lie. Uh, I can't insult people, and I can't do wrong by my fellow man. Even if I wanted to, I just can't. For whatever reason, I don't know. I'm just, just can't do anything wrong for some reason. I'm like perfect or something. Wonderful, just wonderful. Now, <clears throat> Eddie, I've heard people call you the greatest person in the world. Some people say you're like God. Some people even say you're better than God. How does that make you feel? Um, I think those assumptions are pretty reasonable. I mean, the only difference between me and God, though, is that I'm a better dresser. <laughs> I mean, I mean, oh, so right seriously, so right. we thought that was a good idea. I mean, why would you wear that if you're like the mightiest being in the world? It's so, so silly, man. But honestly, people can believe whatever they want to believe. You know, if they, if they think that's the truth and they want to follow that and not force it on people by use of coercion, then who must tell them no? God, you're perfect. Eh, I wouldn't say perfect. No, you are perfect. <laughs> no, you're right, I am perfect, I am perfect. Yes, yes. Now, before we end the show, I understand you want to play us a song you made recently? Well, it's not really a song. It's more of like a, like a spoken poetry with a few instruments. Oh, well, please grace us with your amazing talent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for late night, that was late night. I was Nate Light. Now, I call You're this nice. piece. Blind old know. man I mean, walking I mean, into a dark alleyway. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, um, that was certainly something. Uh, stick around because after the break, we have our first edition of Student Insight with the host Jonah Bowen. Don't go away. Short Stack, we'll be right back. Seatbelt? Uh, no. Kev, you know that people not wearing a seatbelt are 30 times more likely to be ejected from the vehicle. Airbags are useless unless you're wearing your seatbelt. Okay, okay guys, I'll wear my seatbelt from now on. For more information on seatbelt and car safety, visit www.safercar.gov. Home fire drills give your family a plan of action. Show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice so everyone knows exactly what to do. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family. Welcome to the first edition of Student Insight. I'm your host, Jonah Bowen. Student Insight is your look into the creative process of students here in Warwick Valley High School. Be sure to catch Student Insight each month on WVTV's Short Stack. You can find us online by subscribing to the WVTV YouTube channel. In addition to Short Stack, you'll find Wildcat News, In the Valley, and Overtime. Joining me today is musician and animator Tristan O'Regan. Welcome to Student Insight. It's good to be here. Now, Tristan, before we ask you some questions, we have an example of your work. Let's take a look.
Wow, pretty incredible stuff. Now, Tristan, at what point in your life did you decide you wanted to compose music? Well, in preschool and kindergarten, I was very avid in rhythm games like Guitar Hero and uh, just listening to the radio once in a while with my yeah. parents. And uh, time passed, time passed. Uh, I was still avid on the radio. And then I got an iTunes account in 2014. And then I started making my own decisions in what I wanted to listen to, uh, when I would listen to them, and all that kind of stuff, like on car rides and stuff. So, And then uh, pre present day, I'm just listening to albums a lot on like Spotify and other music services that allow you to just go whenever you want, uh, listen to whatever you want. Blasting you want. your tunes, listening oh, yeah. to your music. Yeah, I That's have a great. lot of music. That's music. great. So what came first, music or animation? Definitely music, because uh, I never really had the chance to animate on a computer besides like post-it notes and flip books and all that kind of stuff. And um, I just recently got a computer to help me animate, and it's really helpful, and I, I just... I've always I've always doodled in class, but never really like animated a whole scene or something. And so now you're taking your doodles onto the screen. Exactly. Yeah. You're making kind of them into real life. Yeah, but music has always just been like just a little bit better. Well, you're combining both. So then, since music is better, what are some of your musical influences? Um, I have a lot of those, but I definitely choose uh, Radiohead, The Beatles, Pink Floyd. The classics. Yeah, just like. I've known them for the longest amount of time in terms of ma making my own musical decisions for like about four years now. So uh, just their melodies and everything and their song structures have influenced me the most and for the longest time. Wow, wow. So uh, some of those uh, musicians, people that you've kind of then taken a liking to and then written stuff similar to them? Yeah, pretty much. And uh, they've definitely uh, influenced me in very gratefully. So now, do you work solo or do you collaborate with other people? Um, I'm not adverse to collaboration, but most of my music, if not all, has been completely solo. I've done all the beats, the, the vocals, the melodies, etc. Um, yeah, I just I just consider myself an independent independent person, and uh, reflecting in my music, it's just always been a theme, basically, because just it's a, it's a solo project, and uh, I don't. I don't want to be, I don't want to be alone forever. But I, I'd like to collaborate sometime in the future with people that are interested, or just anybody, really. Yeah, maybe go into the entertainment industry with other people that are interested. But also, when you work on your own, you know, you get all the credit, which is pretty nice too. Yeah, that's pretty nice too. So, do you have any uh, advice for any aspiring artists who'd like to do stuff like what you're doing? Basically, just don't try and copy people. Like if you have an influence, don't try and directly imitate them in your music or your work. Like, let's say if you copy Lady Gaga, if you're just copying Lady Gaga, you're just copying Lady Gaga, but if you take her uh, music and put it as a direct inspiration and influence in it and not just trying to copy Lady Gaga, people won't see you like that, and uh, maybe you can even 
put a little original originality into it and just separate yourself in the music industry because if you don't differentiate differentiate yourself in the music industry people are just going to see you as a copy of other people and it's going to be hard to get yourself out there and right. yeah, yeah you want i mean you want to do your own your own stuff and you know when people see something different that's what draws their attention to it i mean for me I'll, if I see something different or interesting, I immediately want to watch it or hear it or listen to it. I think that's what makes up a lot of the entertainment industry. Exactly. Well, you know, so thank you so much for coming on Student Insights. No problem, man. You know, remember to subscribe to the WVTV YouTube channel to catch all of our shows. And for Student Insight on WVTV, this is Jonah Bowen. Stick around for more short stack. Coming right after this. The first time I met Morris, the door flew open and I got this larger than life personality talking at the top of his lungs. Oh man, oh I totally forgot. Hold on, let me get this for you. So I thought, all right, we're definitely gonna be friends. Oh, Dapper Leon. Oh no. <laughs> He's the highlight of my week. He's always gregarious at the door. Dana, you know, like it's a surprise. I've known Mikhail and Jero about six months. You don't find many young people that want to be fooling around with us old folks. <laughs> I come to the door, drop the food in the fridge, and the coffee is on. The things that can get you down, he's always like, well, that's how it goes. He gave me some marriage advice right when I got engaged. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. She came in and she said, nobody else knows this but you. We're going to have a baby. And I thought, oh my gosh. Despite his vision not being so good, he sees who I am. He helps put me back in perspective. And then I just feel better. I said, you guys have no idea how I really feel, truly feel about you. Doing Meals on Wheels for me is the joy that I look for at the end of my week. I don't feel like I'm volunteering when I'm with Leon. Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America, 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 let's do lunch. Welcome back to Short Stack. I'm William Theodore O'Dell. Next up, we have the third collaboration between the art, English, and communications departments, bringing to life a children's story. Let's take a look. Sebastian was a skunk getting ready for his first day at Finch Forest Elementary School. Sebastian was very nervous because he didn't know if he could make friends. The problem was Sebastian was incredibly shy for as long as he could remember. He had a hard time trying to talk to animals that weren't in his family. His mom and dad tried to help him by taking him to parks to talk to other kids his age. But he always ended up playing alone, too nervous to talk to others. As he started getting ready for school, he wondered if he would meet someone. He heard his mom calling him from downstairs. Mom, I think I'm ready, said Sebastian in a quiet voice. Oh, that's just wonderful, sweet pea. Are you excited? Asked Sebastian's mom with a big grin. I think. Do you think I'll find a friend? Of course you will, sweet pea. It just takes time, as she grabbed his hand to head out the door. As they went out the door, Sebastian saw Regina the rabbit, who was a gray and white rabbit. He saw her hop past with her dad. Regina's dad said hello to Sebastian's mom, and Regina smiled at Sebastian. Feeling nervous, Sebastian hid behind his mom and looked down. Soon after, Regina and her dad hopped away to go to school. Sebastian arrived to school and said goodbye to his mom as he walked through the door of his classroom. He was very overwhelmed. There were rabbits, bears, deer, snakes, and so much more. 
there were so many kids in one class that he didn't know where to sit. He would always get nervous sitting next to new animals because he didn't know them. He looked around and saw all the kids in their groups of friends talking to one another and saw an empty table at the corner of the room. He started to walk towards it and Regina hopped right in front of him. She smiled at him again and said, Hey Sebastian, what's up? Sebastian looked down nervously and said, n n Not much. Th th thanks for asking. Regina replied excitedly, No problem. I was wondering if you wanted to come play with my friends over there. Regina pointed to her group of friends near the window. Sebastian looked over and noticed about four or five kids sat at a table smiling over at him and Regina. N no thanks. I would like to sit at the, that table if that's okay with you, said Sebastian while looking down. Regina's smile slightly dropped and she nodded her head and she hopped away to her friends by the window. Sebastian looked over at his table and noticed that it was still empty. He walked towards the empty table and sat. He took out his notebook and started to draw until the teacher came in. During lunch, Regina came up again and asked Sebastian if he wanted to play with her and her friends. For the second time that day, Sebastian told her that he wanted to sit by his table and Regina again nodded and hopped to her friends who were playing kickball. Sebastian found a corner in the playground and started to draw. Every day Regina didn't give up on inviting Sebastian into her group and she was determined to have him as a friend. Regina didn't understand why Sebastian didn't want to be her friend. When she got home, she asked her mom, Why doesn't Sebastian want to hang out with me? I ask him to come hang out with me every day and he always says no. Her mom noticed her confused face. Honey, Sebastian is a special little boy. He doesn't like big groups. Maybe you should think of another way to hang out with him. Regina's eyes lit up and she exclaimed, I got it! As Sebastian walked into the, his class with his head down, he headed straight for his empty table in the corner of the room. He sat down and took out his notebook and he didn't realize that Regina was sitting right across from him. Hi, Sebastian, Regina exclaimed loudly. Sebastian looked up, startled and wide-eyed. Why aren't you with your friends? asked Sebastian. I didn't feel like hanging out with them today. Is that okay if I sit here? Sebastian nodded and Regina smiled. Every day after that, Regina hung out with Sebastian at the table in the corner. Sebastian finally made his first friend. I want to thank everyone who was involved to help bring that story to life. And tis the season to be spooky. <laughs> and we have two unnerving shorts to show you. First is one directed by Mike Goronsky, starring Eddie McCarthy. And assisting with the production were Nick St. Dennis and Joe Giuliano. Let's peep this out. Yeah, I don't know, man. I took out with Advil, but I'm still out of it. Like, I don't know what's up with me. Oh, word. Okay, man.
fascinating to see what some students consider to be scary, <laughs> as um, that was certainly uh, unnerving. Um, people fear many things, especially when you're face to face with them. Let's have a look at another short, written and directed by David Abb. Hello, Dad. Yeah, I'm just taking some pictures for class. Yeah, I know. I'll be home. Okay, bye. I love you. The director would like to thank all who participated on Click. That does it for this edition of Short Stack. Be sure to catch this show and many others on Warwick Valley Television YouTube page. If you would like to be featured on Short Stack, there is always room for you. For WVTV, I'm William Theodore O'Dell. Catch you next time on The Stack. Because of you, I felt hopeless. Because you said rude things about my work, I started to question my own voice. I know it was a joke, but it still hurt me. Because of your negative comments online, I've almost quit doing the one thing that makes me happiest in life. Because you shared something about me that was private, I felt embarrassed. Because you said hi to me on the first day of school, I felt included and I knew that I was going to be okay. Because of you sharing your story with me, I feel comfortable sharing my own. Because you were there when I was coming out, you helped me regain my confidence. I'm still here today because of you. Ninety-one percent of plastic isn't recycled. It takes 500 years for the average size plastic bottle to fully decompose. Nine billion tons of litter is dumped into the world's ocean each year. Change starts with you. Pick up after yourself.